Hello friends, today I will discuss about the poem The Good Morrow by John Dunn. So before discussing the poem, let's have an introduction of the poem. So this is the look of the poem. It's a very famous poem of Dunn. It was published in the year of 1633 under the collection of songs and sonnets. It is a sonnet but doesn't follow the line structure of 14 lines of a sonnet. It is a work of 21 lines divided into three stanzas. According to Dunn, sonnet refers to any kind of love poetry. So let's go to our discussion on the poem. Good morrow. The superficially reading of the poem, The Good Morrow, gives us the idea that it is a love poem. Here the poet himself tells about his love for his beloved. Uh, on, on that note, we can have a detailed niceties of their love story. Uh, Dunn here uses the subject of I for himself and we both for him and his lover. We know that Dunn is a metaphysical poet in nature and in the present poem we have a clear evidence of it. He defends his love for his beloved in a way which is both physical and spiritual or divine you can say. The poem invites us to look at the depthness of their love or the love of the two lovers. And we, uh, uh, the readers, can enjoy the poet's picturization of the immortal love. So let's uh, have a detailed uh, line by line analysis uh, of the poem. The first line of the poem. In the very first line of the uh, first stanza, or the very first two lines of the uh, first stanza, we can have uh, the discussion uh, where the poet becomes wonder uh, at thinking about their action and dealing before they were in love. He asks if they were busy then with their mother's breast milk. So, so I am reading the lines. I wonder by my truth what thou and I did till we loved, were we not win till then? So this is the question of Dunn. Uh, in the next two lines, he again questions whether they were getting the country pleasures like a child or a snorting in a den like the seven slippers. So uh, there is a story regarding the seven slippers. According to the story, during the persecution of the Christians under the Roman Emperor uh, Decoys, uh, seven Christian soldiers were concealed in a cave to which the entry was later sealed. So then uh, they fell into a miraculous sleep uh, more than 100 years after the cave had been uh, reopened and the slippers Awoke. So this is the story behind the seven slippers. And uh, I am reading the line, uh, but sucked on the country pleasures childishly, childishly, and snorted we in the seven slippers den. It was so, but this all pleasures fancies be, if ever any beauty I did see which I desired and got, it was but a dream of thee. So that uh, last three line of the, of the first stanza, we can have a, 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 a discussion of John Dunn in which uh, he asserts his love to his beloved by claiming that his desired beauty, which he got, and it was all about a dream for his beloved. And then the next stanza, that is the second stanza, uh, which reads, 
uh, and now good morrow to our wake, waking souls so in the first line of the second stanza we, uh, the poet wishes good morrow to both their lovable souls which do not look uh, one another out of fear or uh, which do not look each other uh, uh, with the eye of fear and the next lines uh which was not one another out of fear yeah i have already re uh, read this uh, for for love all love of other sides controls and makes one little room and everywhere uh, then uh, in the next uh, uh, in this lines the poet says the love has the quality to control all the sides or all the kinds of love all kinds of love and thus the process of making love be continuing everywhere and then uh, i am reading the lines next lines let's see discoverers to new worlds have gone let maps to other worlds on worlds have shown let us pause one world each had one and is one so in these three lines uh, the poet says that love has the quality to control yeah in the last three lines how da, uh, dan shows that how he beautifies and glamorizes actually here he beautifies and glamorizes their world of love by letting the sea discoverers discover their world and others their maps of worlds and the world of the poet and his beloved is the only one in the next stanza we can have the first line like this my face in thine eye thine in mine appears and true plain hearts do in the faces rest so what does it mean in these two lines of the far, of, uh, of the third stanza the poet speaks about their physically united state and their faces and the hearts are reflected on each others uh, then uh, we can have another line uh, where we can find two better hemispheres without sharp not without declining west so what does he mean uh, he co compares their united world with undividable two hemispheres that's without a surf uh, north and declining west next three lines uh, whatever dies was not mixed equally if our lo two loves be one or thou and i love so alike that none do slacken none can die Finally, the poet expresses his view here that things which cannot mix equally can die, but their equally proportioned love, where thou and lo I love so alike, cannot be separated and die. So these are all about uh, the analysis of the poem, the Good Morrow. Thank you so much.